What's going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan and I'd like to welcome you to the cloud engineering for the network pro for both Azure and AWS over on the Packet Pushers network. Now this is going to be a full playlist. We're going to be going through exactly what you need to break into the cloud as a network engineer. So we're going to be talking about firewalls in the cloud, virtual networks, entire networks that are literally virtual data centers. It's going to be very, very cool. So the first video here, we're going to be breaking into cloud networks and why they're important. And it's going to be a little bit of a lecture, but I promise you, it's definitely going to be important. And then all of the videos moving forward, we're going to be talking about the architecture and diving actually hands on. So we're going to be in AWS, we're going to be in Azure. Now, if you are following along with this playlist, I do definitely recommend having a free AWS account. You can get a free tier for like 12 months. A lot, some of the things that we're doing may not fall into that, but it's not going to cost you a whole bunch, to be honest. Like, I don't see anybody spending $100 a month or anything like that throughout this course. Just make sure that you delete your resources afterwards, of course. And then for Azure, you do have a 30-day credit trial. But again, it's going to be one of those things where you're not going to spend a crazy amount of money, but you might spend a couple bucks. So with that, let's go ahead and break into cloud networks and why they're important. All right, so let's kind of break down what the cloud actually looks like from a networking perspective. And really what we want to think about is it's on-demand availability for any type of network resource. So obviously hardware still exists, uh, but there are other options, you know, so let's say you're using F5 on-prem or using Cisco or, or Juniper or whatever you're using, you have different options now if you want some type of cloud or hybrid or, you know, any other type of environment. Now, when we think about on-prem stuff, you know, we're thinking about routers, we're thinking about switches, we're thinking about firewalls, uh, we're thinking about intrusion detection uh, and prevention systems. We're talking about gateways. This is a lot of stuff to have to run on-prem for say, an office of six people, uh, an office of eight people, an office that not a lot of people are going to nowadays and we all know why. So. Even though we're typically used to like buying all of this hardware and stuff and having to wait for it and doing all of these things, there are other options nowadays. Let's just break into a quick example here. Let's say you had Active Directory and you know you had to set up authentication for users to be able to authenticate to their office, and then you needed to be able to set up ways for them to route out to the internet and what we would accept internally, what we would accept externally, and VPNs and all of this stuff. You can do all of that in the cloud now. <laughs> you know, you can have Azure Active Directory, you can have, you know, VPCs in the cloud and all that stuff. And we're gonna go over all of that in this course, don't worry. But I do just kind of wanna get your brain ticking a little bit. All right, so we have to face a reality that is just becoming more and more apparent. And I think that it will continue to be. Well, a lot of us are remote. Uh, you know, I've been working remote since even before COVID. And I know a lot of other people have too, but now it's like, you know, we have these hybrid roles of, hey, you could work a few days in the office and this and that. So number one, the idea of huge offices being around forever probably isn't that big of a reality, especially in the networking world. And because everybody's working remote, you know, as a network engineer, you're not sending them. <laughs> routers and switches to set up in their house, right? Unless, you know, you're, uh, you're the network engineer, then maybe you got some stuff going on in your house. But other than that, you're not sending the marketing team networking equipment. And because of that, you're probably going to be doing a lot of stuff in the cloud. Okay, so first, we have public cloud networking. And again, we're going to go over all of this. Don't worry, I just want to, again, get some theory in your head here. They host, you use in Azure and AWS, they host the environment, and you use it. They host all the hardware that's needed, all that stuff. Everything is virtual for you. Hybrid networking. Now you can set up networking in the cloud and networking on-prem, and you can actually connect the two with something called VPC peering, where you know, let's say you have you have your public and you have your private networks on-prem. You got the same thing in the cloud, right? You set up some private subnets, you set up some public subnets. You can connect them. You can connect those networks as if you know. You were on like a constant VPN kind of, you can think about it like that, but those networks are connected. Actually the VPN thing, that's not a good example. You could think about it, you know, like a WAN where, you know, you have multiple offices and you're connecting 
those offices via the public internet, right? Same thing with the hybrid network, except you're in the cloud and then you're connecting to maybe an office. Okay, so the vendors we know are in the cloud. So like these are just, you know, two screenshots here, but F5, you can get in an AWS and an Azure. Cisco, you can get in an AWS and Azure. A lot of the other vendors that we know, you can get them in the cloud as well. These vendors are now, you know, creating software networks, whatever we want to call them, in the cloud because they realize, oh, a lot of stuff is moving here. All right, so now let's head over to the web browser here. I want to show you a little bit of Azure and a little bit of AWS. All right, so let's start with AWS here. So first things first, I'm in the AWS portal, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for VPC. Now, when you think about VPC, what I want you to think about is it's called it's a virtual private cloud. And what that means is it's pretty much like a data center almost. You're really getting the same data center benefits like subnets and routing tables and side arranges and all of that stuff. You're actually getting that from the VPC. It's literally like a data center. So if I go to your VPCs, we can see here that I have a few different VPCs here. Uh, if I click on my VPC ID here, we can see the VPC. We can see that it's enabled. We can see that I have main routing tables and my CIDR range. This is the network CIDR range. Okay, and then we come down here, we can see the CIDR. We can go to subnets and we can look up my VPC. Now we can see here US East 1A. So in that availability zone, I have a subnet. And then we can see our subnet here. We can see any details about the subnet, like the CIDR range that's being used, for example, on the subnet itself the available IP addresses, we can see the route tables. Now this is going to be, you know, if we have something going out to the internet. So again, we have what's the destination right here, 0000 slash 0. That means I have an internet gateway that's essentially saying any device, any compute, like an EC2 instance, that's set up on this subnet, using this subnet, it can get out to the internet. I can also set up subnets that are private, again, public and private. So all of the different options that you have on prem, you also have in the cloud. Same thing with elastic IPs, for example. So, you know, you can create a public IP address, assign it to an EC2 instance, which is like a virtual machine, and maybe it's a web server. So maybe people are hitting that IP address or you're setting up DNS and, you know, connecting it to that EC2 instance. Again, if we go and we look at Route 53, okay? So Route 53 is DNS. <laughs> you, you know, you have hosted zones, and, you know, so for example, I have a domain name here that I own, and this is a hosted zone. Now, I don't want to freak you out. <laughs> if you don't know all this stuff, it's perfectly fine. These are the types of things that we're going to be talking about and going over inside of this playlist. So don't worry. This is, again, the high level. I want to get you excited. I want to show you a little bit what's going on, give you a little bit, and then I'm going to reel you in and then I'm going to dive in to, you know, everything from a technical standpoint throughout this playlist. So now let's head over to Azure. So I'm in Azure here, and if I go to virtual networks, okay, we can see here that I have a bunch of different virtual networks here. I can go into, you know, maybe one of these here, and then I could see the address space, so I can see the CIDR. I can go into subnets, and I can see, you know, I have a default subnet here. I can click on that default subnet, and I can see my range. I can even add in some IPv6 stuff if I want to. NAT gateway, network security groups, routing tables. One thing you're going to notice here, everybody, between Azure and AWS, the names are a little bit different, but not really. But at the end of the day, it's really all of the same stuff. <laughs> all right. So we got the high level going on. We showed you a little bit of what's going on in Azure. We showed you a little bit about what's going on in AWS. Now let's really dive into this. Get your keyboards out, everybody. Have one screen over here, one screen over there if you want. So you can follow along with the videos and do the hands-on goodness as well. Please don't just watch the videos, actually do it while you're watching the videos. Do the work while you're watching the videos. That's how we can cement this knowledge into your brain. So with that, we'll see you in the next video.